गुड मॉर्निंग नमस्कार दियर डिवोटीज एंड फ्रेंड्स एंड ऑन दिस ओकेजन इज ए होली काली पूजा एंड दिवाली आई प्रे फॉर ऑल ऑफ यू एंड सेंड माई ग्रीटिंग्स टू यू वी हैव ऑब्जर्व अवर काली पूजा ओवर ही है परहैप्स मैनी ऑफ यू हैव सीन दैट ऑन ऑनलाइन a few volunteers came and it was a wonderful puja for almost 3 hours and uh, after that a little prasad and all so many from different parts of the world they have seen that you have also noticed and then i found i thought that is better that instead of the, our regular classes uh, we will have the yoga vashishta we will have a discussion on the kali is brahman this statement was given by bhagwan sri ramakrishna very interesting because the kali the shiva and all these ideas comes from the tantra a completely different from vedanta and vedanta it goes straight in a path of knowledge and it is uh, the brahman that is the goal of the vedanta Of course, when you say Vedanta, it includes the Dvaita, Vishista, Dvaita, and Advaita. But when we say Vedanta, we mean Advaita Vedanta, and that Advaita Vedanta we are talking about here. And Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna emphatically said, "Whom you call Brahman, I call Kali." How could he? because from the both path from the path of knowledge and path of the tantra and also of course from the path of devotion bhakti he traveled these are the three main the we can say rajmarg is the main path that leading us towards the supreme that god or goddess or the brahman the consciousness the atman so these three one is the path of knowledge and the path of karma they say karma means the tantra is associated with and path of devotion today we will try to understand the how kali can become the brahman now what is brahman it says no one can answer because it is beyond time space and causation the brahman is the consciousness brahman is all pervading but it is the self realization that much after the realization of the brahman one could say about it sometimes bhagwan sri ramakrishna he said to his beloved disciples see i feel like telling you what is it but someone is choking my throat i can't so that is the main thing how to explain the brahman because it is myself i cannot explain what is myself the moment i have to say that i have to say within the framework of time and then the space and the cause and there is nothing like that and that is why the brahman cannot be explained it is a subjective knowledge and in the language of bhagwan sri ramakrishna brahma eto han he went to meet a great scholar and there he mentioned like that that is called the no one could defile brahman brahma eto han vidya sagar mahashay his title was vidya sagar the ocean of knowledge and he said oh this is a new word i heard today i never could think about it so that is the fathomless and consciousness and that has been given the name as brahman vistareti brahman is everything that covers so that is the vedanta ultimate goal of vedanta is brahman the brahman cannot be defined brahman is a subjective knowledge you have to realize that brahman how to realize that brahman then it says shravana manana nididhyasana 
these are all Vedantic theory it goes. Sravana, you have to listen, you have to listen, you have to listen and you have to withdraw your mind from all other thoughts and when you are listening your mind is going and trying to understand the uh, import of it, the subtle knowledge of it. You are that, the guru will say, you are that. The who is this you? Is this body and the mind? So that you are that when they say, the, what is it? So that I have to understand. Tat tvam asi. Tat is that. That is that Brahman. That is that supreme. Tvam is you. Asi is. You are that. So who am I? Am I the, the body-mind complex? That uh, the jnani, the, those who are following the path of knowledge, they will be constantly, 24 hours, they will be going on judging. Am I this body? Am I this mind? How can that be? Body is changing, mind is changing, taking different forms, different positions. Then things that are changing cannot be the permanent and Brahman is permanent. So how can I be that? So it goes on. That is the way it goes. Then ultimately they apply Jahal Lakshana. Jahal means giving up. So I am not going into the details of all those. So this is Jahal Lakshana. They apply and with that they go to the truth which is Brahman. And when they go to that Brahman, what do they feel? Those who have already realized that Brahman, they could give this much idea that it is existence. It is always there. It has no beginning. It has no end. So that is, it was there when the creation was there. It will be there when there will be no creation. So that is called the constant. So it's existence. And in Sanskrit they say Sat. S-A-T. Sat. Existence. Eternal. Then it says Chit. It is the knowledge. And knowledge. We know some object. There is a picture of Shankaracharya. The exponent of Advaita Vedanta. Now I how I know? Because I saw that picture and someone wrote below that this is Shankaracharya. This is a, that was that time there was no photography. So must someone must have painted. Then it has developed. We cannot say that this is Shankaracharya. He was like this because the person who was painting, we do not know how good he was. So obviously we know that this is Shankaracharya may be exactly like this and may not be. But still we have some idea about the Shankaracharya. It must be like this. This is an object. So I see and then I bring back the knowledge to the mind and mind cognize, mind understand and mind take accept it. So this is the object and through my experience, I am accepting it. That is a type of knowledge. But what knowledge this Vedanta is speaking about? It is a revelation. It is not like this. It is a revelation. When you are thirsty, if we take a <coughs> drink water, then we feel satisfied. The thirst is quenched. So we know that when you are thirsty, you should drink water. So that is a experimental knowledge. We experimented and that is the knowledge. It is not like that knowledge. So what type of knowledge is this? It's just a revelation. I am. So those who have realized that, they only feel but they could not say and they have said, only given us some hint that this is cheat, this is knowledge that much. And finally they say it is the bliss, existence, knowledge and bliss. Friends, we have some conception of existence. 
my grandfather passed away my father passed away they were there and now they are no more so we can understand the they were existing and this moment they are not existing so this existence we can understand this is that within the time so this brahman has no beginning no end we can understand to some extent about the knowledge when we get some knowledge from an object and we understand the knowledge means like this about this knowledge how it is we do not know unless and until we realize that brahman we won't be able to feel it also and finally it is the bliss here also from the object we get some joy suppose someone likes to eat something and if he gets that food then he gets that joy the satisfaction we have some conception of joy but what is that bliss there is no object you are not getting anything we are having the five organs the sense organs of knowledge now when this five sense organs are satisfied i like to have this type just mean smell the flower so all the rose smell i like someone gave me the rose or the rose smell i'm satisfied i'm happy is this like that no thousands and millions and billions time more that joy so the conception of the brahman it is very difficult even though they have given us sat chit anand swarup and moreover it doesn't end over there it's not ending over there in the vedanta they will say om iti brahma the om when you are making that sound a u ma it is rolling from your navel then coming up to the throat and then coming out from your mouth and the vibration that you feel so that one way we can understand and then they will explain what is this om the without anything the sound is coming usually sound means we need two things to make the sound create the sound it is without that so the brahman is also almost like this the brahman has no creator so this is all conception this we are only thinking but unless and until we realize we won't be able to say so it is said the brahman cannot be defined now, some conception has been given that this is like this so sat chit anand swarup then it says those who have realized the rishis they said brahman is one it is not two and they will be explaining again sagat bheva bheda then big like that like that again there is a three different types of understanding bijatiya sajatiya and swagata so these are the three different types of understanding so when we are studying vedanta we have to understand these th things also the vedanta the goal is to understand brahman to realize brahman and what type of understanding what type of realization the sometimes so we realize something what is that why is to love my brother so much i helped him so much and suddenly i found that brother he is not only liking me at all rather he is trying to harm me it is a realization the if i am helping if i am loving if i am showing my concern even then also that person may turn completely different this is a realization is the brahman that type of realization no it is completely different type of realization it is understanding the me it may be we can say someone he lost his mind and he couldn't recognize who is he so he was going on searching then somehow with the doctor's help and all he came back to his own self 
and then he oh this is me it's that like the like that experience not even that it is just a revelation and only those again and again i am repeating only those who have realized can say and no one else so this is brahman but they say it is only one it is not two only one and no conception of two so they say adwaita ekam eva advitiyam in sanskrit they say ekam means one that was sufficient no to stress that they say evam advitiyam it, it has no two why the moment we think of one the conception of two and many it will come that's why they say it is ekam eva advitiyam it is eternal unchanging infinite again it is the cause of change and creation this brahman so about the brahman they are giving the idea the goal of vedanta is brahman and what is that brahman no one can define and what is that brahman how we know those who have already realized they give us the hints it will be like this it will be like that etc etc and slowly slowly we can understand it as if like giving us an the when i was first uh, i came to america you know the from india america is a completely different country and then i was going the fast journey alone i was going and in our country if you go to an airport nowadays our airports are also delhi calcutta chennai hyderabad is big big airports but not so many complications as it is here and if you go to chicago airport my god where to go how to do and this is the then someone told i will drop you at the gate and you will find that stair is this then you go this then you go there and then you reach over there after getting down then one gentleman he guided me he told only one thing you remember baggage claim there will be all the time everywhere they will write baggage claim and arrow follow that arrow really i did that in the washington dc you have to get down then you have to catch a train and then and from the train you have to go out to that It's so confusing and and i was thinking which train i am actually going then i saw baggage claim i am going to catch so i was not having the baggage so by this way one is guiding and same way the rishis are guiding us it is one without two it is eternal and it is that the source of creation it is unchanging but the source of changing this is brahman so what is that vedanta the brahman we are trying to understand this then the brahman has two types they say the first is nirguna brahma in sanskrit nirguna means without qualities what are the qualities are the students of vedanta they all know sattva raja tama in hinduism not many only two three mainly three if you can remember those things and it easy to understand sattva all good knowledge and love they say sattva raja knowledge love but at the same time ego i will help you but for that you have to do this for me that is called ego so this is the raja and tama all bad so this we can understand satta raja tama so one consciousness without this quality the same consciousness again with the quality that is called swaguna brahma brahma ni guna ni means negative no quality then swaguna brahma with quality now the question where from the qualities came if that brahman was not having any quality how come this brahman have those qualities where from these qualities came and then is the first brahma and the second brahma are the same 
they say yes it is almost same and those qualities it was there potentially there unmanifested so all that qualities good and bad light and darkness always there in the first condition of the brahman of the consciousness which was one all pervading but completely inactive so this is we can understand so it is like this and then the same brahman is now transforming and that is called with the sakara with form the brahman nirakar without form and nirguna without quality that is the supreme brahman friends i will request you to remember these because i am going to compare the same thing with the tantra so that is why i am telling this the brahman which is nir akara there is no akara there is no form and also nirguna without any qualities but the qualities are there potentially there and it is not manifested in second form with form the saguna and sakara sakara means with form and the nirguna you know thousands of years the our ancestors the great persons they were having the debate on this how this can be which is not having any form can the same thing have the form they could not get the answer they were debating very recently bhagwan sri ramakrishna he solved it with a wonderful analogy with an example he gave why have you not seen the water which has no form and the same water when it comes in contact with the cold it becomes the snow the coolness the chillness the same water taking the form the formless become with form and again the sun ray that melts that snow and it becomes water again so that which was not having the form can take the form how with the coolness a chillness of the devote devotion when the devotees are praying to god i cannot imagine you without any form please take this form in the bhagavata the examples are there and the same way the knowledge the knowledge is is like the scorching sun that melts the form how there can be form this is hinduism the same thing without form with form without quality with quality now when the creation comes the what type of creation the shankaracharya he says it is <coughs> bibartavad what is the problem the problem is if the same thing has been transformed into so many that means the original the source has been exhausted so naturally from the milk we are making the sweets the sweets naturally has taken out all the milk and there is no milk it is not like this so they say many of you know purnamada purnamidam purnat purnamudachyate purnasya purnam adaya purnameva avashishyate is a very wonderful equation that uh, purnam eva avashishyate if you take out the whole the whole will remain how because shankara says bibartavad is a sanskrit terminology apparent transformation it is not real transformation but there is another group and they will say no it is parinamavad but if we accept the parinamavad the real transformation like the milk it is transforming into the yogurt or the curd so there is no milk left so there is some problem is there accepting parinamavad but anyway this is not of our subject today we are going to understand how tantra 
is explaining the same thing. So, what is that Kali? Now, Brahma and Kali are same. Not Brahma, Brahman. Brahman and Kali. How can that be? Sri Ramakrishna said, whom you call Brahman, I said Kali. How that can be? What is this Kali? Kalanat Kala Iti Kali. That which is beyond the time. Kalanat, stop even the Kala, the time. It is beyond time. The same time space causation. As because it is the beyond time space causation, no one can say who is Kali. Friends, there are beautiful songs. And I had the opportunity, I love singing, though I am I'm not trained, but I may be making some mistakes in the uh, difference, uh, the grammar in the song, but uh, the music, but I love that. And it explains so wonderfully the Vedantic conception. The one is, in Bengali, Mon Karoki Tattu Tare Unmatta she adhar gari. What the, it says, O oh my mind, how you are going to explain the truth of God is Kali, Mother Kali? It will be like searching an object in a dark room by a mad person. His mind is not steady. And then he is going to search something in a dark room. Is it possible to find? Even a steady mind, a person, it will be very difficult, but a person who is completely lunatic, how can he? So it is giving almost, it is impossible. The conception of the line, you are trying to understand the truth of Kali, which is impossible to understand. It goes beyond the time. You cannot explain it. Just like the Brahman, the Kali Tatta, the truth about Kali also cannot be said. It goes beyond the time, space and causation. Truth about Kali, on that it is called Tantra. So they have researched on that. The Andha, it is called Tantra. Tantra means expansion. Brahman means expansion. Tantra also means expansion. Vistareti Brahma. You know, Vishnu also means expansion. Yet, the, all the time, the Hindus, they try to give you that idea, it is all pervading, everywhere, all pervading. This all pervasive, all pervading, this conception, if a human can have, can understand, can practice, think how wonderful person he will be or she will be. Because if I feel that I am connected with everything of this world, I am not going to hurt or do any harm to anyone. So that is the conception and that is the conception of God. The God means love. Why? Because God is everything. So that way it says it is the Tantra. In Vedanta it is also the knowledge. In Tantra it is also the knowledge. And it says Tantra means expansion. In Sanskrit, Tanoti, Bistaram Karoti. Tanu, the Tan, Tanoti means expansion, Bistaram Karoti. What it is expanding? Jnanamiti. It is the knowledge that you are expanding. Again, what type of jnana? It says, Tanyate Bistaryate Jnanam Anena Iti Tantram. Tanyate means Bistaryate. What? Jnanam. Iti Anena Iti, that knowledge is called Tantra. The Tantra means knowledge. Sometimes some people, and mainly, I don't know why, the, our Indian movies, they will always show Goddess Kali 
as a dangerous killing like that. Never, never, never. Mother Kali is the symbol of knowledge. And she, when she is killing, it is, she is not killing the human being or any being. She is only destroying our ignorance. So I don't know when people will understand it. And this movie means it gives the impressions to thousands of people who will be going and seeing that and they are thinking, oh my God. So people, they love to go to Krishna Mandir temple thinking, oh, Krishna is so kind, so good, so good looking. And Kali is dangerous, exactly opposite. Krishna organized that <laughs> great war. He killed millions of people, thousands of people. And Kali means the conception that from the darkness we have to go to the light. And what is the darkness? It is ignorance. Why Kali is black? Because we don't understand her. So it is black. It is not actually black. So there is again the expressions of these tantrikas. They will say, is Kali black? How that can be? Because I have seen her in the light. I have seen her in different color. Is Kali a lady, a mother? No. I have seen her again as a male sometimes, female sometimes, without any form sometimes. So if we go through this, those experiences of the sadhakas, as because the tantra is a popular among some people, not like Vedanta, so the tantra is also, that's why Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna practiced all the tantra, practiced the Vedanta, practiced the, uh, the, the devotion, bhakti. Then he combined all these three and he gave it to us. This tantra, Tanyate Vistarjate Gyanam Anena Iti Tantram is the expansion of the realization of the knowledge. And that is Tantra. What is Vedanta? Realization of the knowledge. What is that knowledge? Knowledge of one. And which is all pervading. What is Tantra? Expansion of the knowledge. And what is that knowledge? Here it says one, but with little difference. Shiva or the consciousness and its power that is Kali are one and inseparable. In the pure Vedanta it says there is only the consciousness and there is no power in it. But Shankara himself accepted without the power how the creation will be. The Shankara, I will quote Shankara uh, he has said that it is without the power, nothing can come. So, Tantra means that power. Shiva is consciousness, all pervading consciousness, but inactive, without any quality. But the Kali is the same consciousness active. Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna gave wonderful examples in different uh, words, he said. And when you see a snake just in a circle, the waiting, not moving, it is a snake. The same snake when wriggling and then moving fast, there is also a snake. The action and inaction, both are there. Inaction is called Shiva, action called Kali. The knowledge of the union of these two is Tantra. Vedanta, knowledge of the one, that is consciousness. Tantra, knowledge of consciousness plus its power, that is Tantra. So this is the difference. That's why Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna, he said, whom you call Brahman, I call Kali. Now, in Vedanta, the supreme condition is known as Parabrahma. And Supreme Brahman, Consciousness, without any modification. This is also known as Nirguna Brahma. We have already mentioned it. This is called Supreme. Supreme means beyond that nothing is there. The Parama, the Sanskrit word Parama means absolute. Beyond that nothing can be there. The Parama Brahma, how it is? Without any activity. Then where from the activity came? Second stage. 
The same Brahman is known as Saguna Brahma, a Brahman with qualities. At this stage, the inside the quality, the inherent qualities like the Satta Rajatama qualities get activated. Then comes the third stage. Third stage is called Hiranyagarbha Adda Brahma. Hiranyagarbha means golden womb. And as the creation begins from here. Tasmat bai tasmat akasat sambhutaha akasat bayu bayu agni agni apaha adbha prithivi. So they give the, in the different Upanishads they say that in the beginning it is only the space and then the air like this it is coming ultimately the water and this creation. So this third stage Hiranyagarbha it come. The best among all the created things are the human. There are so many different type of creations are there. And in that creation, the best creation is the human being. Why? And if you notice, at the Christianity also it says, the God made man out of his own image. It doesn't never say the God made elephant out of it. No, it is a created. But why human being? Because the best creation. Why best creation? Some qualities, divine qualities the God has given to us. Unfortunately, we do not understand. And really, really, we misunderstand that as ego. I know that there is no God. This fellow is telling. God created. But this person will say, I know there is no God. And who is he? Don't know that. What is going to happen to him next moment? Doesn't know that. But still he will be. So God has created the human being with some gift, special gift. What is that? The intellect. The intellect that has been given to the human being. And if that intellect is properly utilized, how? For the analysis. If we can understand, analyze the things all around us, then only we can become very happy. Otherwise, it is very difficult. So you have to understand this, otherwise it is really, really going to make the problem. So human being is the best creation. And also in the Islam that they also said the Allah the finally created the human being and then call all the, uh, the divine pe things to come and touch their feet and bow the, before that human being. But the angels all came except one. And that angel told, no, I have been created much earlier than the human being. And I am a divine personality. How can I bow down before the human? So in there, uh, the, they say that God banished him and he became the shaitan, the, the devil. So that is the conception. But here the main story is the God is asking even the angels to bow before the human being. And Swami Vivekananda said, the human beings are the moving tabernacles, moving temples. There's so much of respect has been given to the human being because human being has that quality. And what is that human being? Now, in the Vedanta, they will give the definition of the human being. They call it Jiva. What is the Jiva? Brahma and Jiva. Brahma, the creator. Hiranyagarbha, the Brahma, he is the creator. Now, it is the third stage of that supreme Brahman. Now, it is all with the qualities. The Brahma is creating. And who is this Brahma? And the Vedanta, in the definition, it says, Maya Upohita Chaitanya. Maya, the power of God, which deludes. Upohita covered the consciousness. The consciousness 
covered by the Maya is Brahma. He is the creator. And who is the Jiva? An individual soul, individual self. Ahamkar Upohita Chaitanya. This is the difference. Upohita means covered. The consciousness covered under ego. Ahamkara, ego. This ahamkara and the maya, the maya's little small part is ahamkara. And what is this ahamkara? No one can explain. Why you are so egoistic? Now I am because I am so good, I am so this, I am so that. They will go on telling. But in reality, if you analyze, there is nothing actually. Nothing is there. The great singer, next day morning when she gets up or he gets up, he can't sing. Then, where is this ego? I am a great singer. So like that, if we analyze, we will see that we can do nothing actually. But still we are thinking, I am somebody, I am somebody. This is the ego that makes the difference and we cannot see God because of this ego. And so unfortunate. The Brahman is, the Brahma is also covered by the Maya and the same reflection is the Chaitanya is covered by the ego and that is called the Jiva. If we, that's why Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna said, if you can remove the ego, you see God. Because the Chaitanya, the consciousness is already there. You need not to search. You need not to find. It is already there. Only it is covered by that. And that cover of the ego is taking us everywhere. We are searching our own self. And ego is taking me there. I will go to that temple. I will go to that holy place. I will go to listen to this, that. And constantly, I, 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 I. The poor man goes on searching like that and couldn't get anything. That's why in the Hindi couplet, they very nicely said, Main ko kaha dhundo bande, main to tera paas mo. Many times I quote this. Main ko kaha dhundo bande, oh my friend, where you are searching me? Main to tera paas mo. I am so close to you. Then it says, Khojoge to abhi milunga. Parbhal ke talasma. Palbhar. Just the blinking of and immediately you will get the revelation because I am that. So this is Maya Upohita Chaitanya is Brahma and Ahamkar Upohita Chaitanya is the Jiva, the individual self. We have to remove the Ahamkar, the ego in the language of Sri Ramakrishna, Ami Mole Ghuchive Janjal. This I should have to remove. Now, this is according to the Vedanta. What Tantra says, the supreme condition is known as Paramashiva. In Vedanta, the supreme condition, the Brahman, absolute Brahman, Parabrahma. Parabrahma Parashakti, that about the Sri Ramakrishna is said. Para means the supreme. And it says Parama Shiva. Again, the Parama word has been used, but instead of Brahma, it is called Shiva. The supreme condition is known as Parama Shiva. The supreme Shiva without any modification. The Shiva as Shabha. Shabha means the, the without consciousness, the dead body, we can say. The, it's like the corpse. So that is the Shiva, Parama Shiva. And the second, second stage is the Parama Shiva is known as Shada Shiva. First is the Supreme Brahman and Brahman without any quality. And then it says again that Swaguna Brahma. And here Parama Shiva, Sada Shiva. The Sada Shiva. The Shiva with qualities. The, most of the places we see only one Shiva on which the Ma Kali is standing. But if you 
go to the very traditional temple, Kali temple, you will find there are two Shivas, one after another. The first Shiva, he is lying and his body is pale, it is not white. As if it is, white means the Sattva. The white, the, the white is the symbol of Sattva Guna. That means the qualities, the Gunas are activated. But the first Shiva, Parama Shiva, the Supreme Shiva is a pale and his head is hanging to some, some uh, one side. There's no sign of life at all. That is the supreme consciousness. It is no, that is that way they give that symbols. Second Shiva lying on it, on its back, the second Shiva is white. Why? Because the activity started. The quality started. And it is, the best quality is the Sattva Guna and the symbol of Sattva Guna, the color of Sattva Guna is white. This Shiva is white. This is the Shiva we always see in all the images and the pictures. The Parama Shiva they don't show. The Parama Shiva then Sada Shiva. Sada Shiva's eyes are open. Parama Shiva's eyes are closed. Sada Shiva eyes are open but inactive, lying down. Then third stage come, this is called as the, the golden womb, here it's called Kali. The third stage is the Kali and standing on the chest of the Shiva. So Parama Shiva is the Jnana, Sada Shiva we can say Icha, will and the Kali is the Kriya, action. The three stages. The Parama Shiva is full of knowledge and nothing is there. Then the second, the Sada Shiva, knowledge plus desire, Icha. What is that Icha? Ekaham Bahushyama Vihi. I am alone, I like to be many. The Icha, the, that is the desire, and that's why he opened his eyes. His body is not pale but white, but still not fully active. Then third stage comes when the activity begins and that is called action kriya, mixed mixture of red and black. Have you noticed? Ma Kali is the mixture of red and black. Ma Kali likes red color. So the red whiskers there it is offered to Ma Kali. Red color shadi is offered to Ma Kali. All these red color. Why red? That is called Raja. And also black. Because in action you need that. Without that you cannot do any action. So that is called Tama. So Ma, Mother, is the combination of white, red and black. White is little less. But the red and black are more. The Kali is creating preserving and destroying. Just like the Vedantin when they are explaining the Parama Brahma, then Swaguna Brahma, Nirguna Brahma, Saguna Brahma and Brahma or the golden womb Hiranyagarbha and similarly Parama Shiva, Sada Shiva and Kali. According to the Tantra, Shiva is the Prakasha. Prakasha means light. Naturally, we can see the light, Prakasha. And Shakti or the power of the Kali is Bikarsha. Bikarsha means reflection. According to the Vedanta, consciousness is light. And the Jiva getting the reflection of that light of the consciousness. Here is the Prakasha is the Shiva, that is the light. And what is Kali? It says the reflection of that light of the Shiva. These two are inseparable. Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna again and again, he said it is completely inseparable. You cannot separate it. Like he gave a wonderful example. Is it like the 
fire and its burning capacity. The fire's burning capacity cannot be separated from the fire. Can this be? So like that it is. Now the consciousness is there and the Ma Kali from where the, all this creation is coming we know and what we are the Jiva how they are explaining the Jiva the Tantra and they say Kunchukam Achadanam Tena Abritam Shiva Eva Jiva this Kunchukam Achadanam as in the Vedanta it says as the consciousness is covered by either Maya or ego here also that consciousness that knowledge is covered by Abritam what Shiva what is Shiva light knowledge and that is Jiva and that's why Swami Vivekananda said and in the eternally this is the knowledge the Hindus are all the time the propounding and teaching Amritasya Putraha why they call the all the beings of the Amritasya Putra because this knowledge and Swami Vivekananda standing over here in Europe and America he said it is a sin to call a man sinner how he said that after realize, realizing this knowledge this truth the jiva the human being and all jivas manifestation are different otherwise all are same the human being manifestation is more the holy persons the manifestation of the divinity is more so they are holy so the consciousness is covered the consciousness here is Shiva that light is covered by ignorance that is why kunchakam achadanam tena abritam Shiva Eva Jiva the Jiva that Swami Vivekananda said the wonderful way he told the service to man is service to God it's just out of emotion he said no service to man is service to God is this that when we are serving a human being and if we can feel this human being who has come before me standing before me with a begging bowl and then asking for some food in reality is God and then I give the food offer the food with great humbleness with great devotion I get the benefit so this is the conception only the thinking the thought process you get everything whatever we are doing if we are doing with this knowledge now friends let us conclude the Tantra's goal is to teach that consciousness or the light which is Shiva and its power the Kali are one and the same without the combination with these two no creation can become there are beautiful stories in the life of Shankaracharya he was a very strong Advaitin and he was going on fighting with other philosophies and philosophers then one day when he was going to bathe in the Ganga in Kashi and the, the before eve that evening the, he gave a wonderful talk on the Advaita Vedanta there is nothing but consciousness and he was stressing on that nothing but consciousness next day morning he was going to bathe to the Ganga and he found you know if Kashi even if you go there's a speciality is the roads are very narrow and one lady is sitting with a dead uh, husband and uh, husband was the body was lying almost blocking the road the lady was sitting the Shankara went and told mother can you please remove this dead body little so that I can go then the lady told now you ask the dead body to move I cannot move the how it is possible I can understand after losing your husband you have lost your mind but a dead body cannot move you have to move it and the lady told why yesterday evening only you were telling everything is consciousness if everything is consciousness, why the dead body cannot move it is also conscious 
then immediately shankar understood oh this is not an ordinary lady and he there and then and there he said and that was called shoundar jalahari shiva shakta yukta yadi bhavati shakta prabhavitum if the shiva the consciousness is connected or associated with the power the shakti then only activity it is possible nachet abama deva nakhalu kushala spanditum api if there is no connection no association of the power and the consciousness then nothing can move even the heart cannot beat and the eye cannot blink no action is possible without the power the consciousness and power are inseparable that is the knowledge and that is tantra and this is only the little difference between the vedanta and tantra the both they go for the knowledge and vedanta go for the one that is consciousness all pervading and the tantra add that along with that that consciousness has the power and try to understand this two together and they have given the name the power as kali bhagwan sri ram krishna understanding this knowledge vedantic knowledge and also the tantric way and he declared the kali is brahman thank you very much so the first question is from krishna gauda he is like he saying my mind is not controlled i am 53 years old unmarried unemployed four years back in my district shimoga i had visited a branch of ramkrishna math and the swami there asked me to refer some books of raj yoga bhakti karma after i have referred this books my mind is still has the same problem i'm sorry to uh, hear this but the first thing for you is to get a job the moment you get a job job means you have to earn money it's not all the time that you have to get a job you can start a business you can do some give some services and start earning some money the moment you will start earning and your that self confidence will come back don't try the religion now and bhagwan sri ramakrishna himself said empty stomach you cannot practice religion friend this is the time you are young person this is the time you have to earn some money and there are many many ways to earn so don't constantly think that you will go and join a office and do some table work and these and that and earn money there are many different ways are there so please try to get some money for you earn some money in the right way of course Uh, and then you will see your self confidence will come back and the self confidence is the vedanta that's why swami vivekananda again and again he said that you have to have the self confidence atma shraddha i pray to the divine mother kali uh, to help you to get a job to get uh, the earning thank you The next question is from Sima Biswas. She is saying, "We don't know what is Brahman. Then how can we say Kali and Brahman are the same?" And the Sima, the whole one-hour talk is on that. <laughs> you listen to this again and again. I think you will get the answer. The next question is from Palas Sen, sir. Can you take my Bokolma, as Sri Ramakrishna took one for Girish. <laughs> no progress is happening with my tiny effort. <laughs> oh, Palash, this is I am not Sri Ramakrishna. This is the God only can take that responsibility, you know. But uh, don't lose hope. The effort means what? And what is this? Simply, as Bhagwan Sri Ramakrishna said and Marshala Devi said, whatever you are doing, just offer to God. Yes. I repeat. In the morning, when you are getting up, keep a picture of Bhagwan Sri Rama Krishna. If you are the devotee of Sri Rama Krishna or any god or goddess, you you respect, you love, keep that picture. Just get up, and the first thing that you should see is that. 
your God or Goddess and pray. A new day is uh, again beginning. O oh God, O oh Mother, please be with me. Then after that, if you have time, if you have taken the initiation, the mantra, that is the, the great thing, contribution of the Tantra. This is the mantra if you have taken. So just repeat that name that the Guru has given. Just believe and have the repeat the name. Then finally, when you are going out for job and in between the office work or the whatever you are doing, just try to remember, God, now I am engaged with this work. Please be with me. Finally, when you are the con concluding, then also stopping and the work you are just finishing, offer the whole thing to at the feet of the God. And before going to bed again, remember God. So this way, if you are constantly doing, that will be a great effect will come. And I will tell you, go on repeating within your mind, I am taking the name of God. And the God will surely come and help me. The God cannot be the false thing. It is true. This moment I am not understanding, but I believe in the words of Ma Sarada Mani Devi. What you say? You are taking the name of God, Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna, and you say that nothing will happen. You will have the darshan of Sri Ramakrishna. She, she is telling that. It is not my words, my mother Sharada's. I have kept that over here with me. Constant inspiration. Go on giving to yourself. I am going to get the darshan of my, uh, my God and the help from my God. One last question, Mother. Madhumita Kaur, she is asking, when we worship Advaita Bhavna, then how do we discriminate Ma Kali as separate than me? Now, these this are two different ways, you know, Madhumita. When you are uh, practicing the pure Advaitic uh, uh, way, that is a completely different thing that you are, as I was telling in the beginning of my talk, they're constantly analyzing who am I? Am I this body? Am I this mind? Like that. That is called the, and there no God, Goddess is there. No conception. It is only you and your sadhana. But if you are following the path of Ramakrishna mission, that is propagated by Sri Ramakrishna, Masharada, Swami Vivekananda and all others, it is a mixture of the Vedanta and the Tantra. So they give in the Ramakrishna mission, they give the initiation. And that initiation is the combination of the knowledge and the power. That's why Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna, who is our God, we consider him God. And about him it is said, Parabrahma Parashakti Jagat Rupa Ramakrishna. Parabrahma is the supreme consciousness. And again, it is the supreme power which is creating, preserving and is dissolving. And that creation, this Jagat, is also He. And this three combined is Sri Ramakrishna. So that way, if you are practicing, then there is no problem. The, the next question is from Sudipta Mandal. He is saying, I am a 20 years old college student in Kolkata. I try to chant Hare Krishna mantra in brackets he is saying I am not initiated but I feel very mechanical someday and feel boring. How to get rid of this? Oh, uh, see the, uh, naturally uh, that's, uh, it is obviously the when you are chanting Hare Krishna Hare Krishna the, this is also a great mantra but uh, it is better that you take initiation and because in India if you are I don't know from which part of India, but there are uh, many Swamis are there. You can go and take the initiation. But before that, you must understand what type of initiation, who is giving the initiation, what is uh, the philosophy they are practicing. First, uh, you understand that and then accept that. But otherwise, the Hare Krishna mantra that you have accepted and repeating, when you are repeating, you try to imagine all your shortfalls, all your mistakes are taken away by that God. Hara, Hara means they take away the 
Krishna, Krishna that supreme God, Krishna that which is constantly attracting, that is called Krishna, Karshati Iti, that God is constantly attracting you and taking away all the shortfalls from you, all the mistakes that you are thinking, all that will go, God will help you. When you are chanting at the same time try to feel it. But you know this is the, in the beginning it will be so testless. You are correct. The, sometimes it is so testless. But if you continue, a time will come and you will find the repetition of the God's name as so joyful and so the, the contemplation, the satisfaction, it will come only through this. Don't give up. Go on repeating it. The next question is from <coughs> Sadne. Uh, he's saying, I'm 20 years old guy. Am I eligible for, for Diksha of Ramakrishna Dev? Oh, yes. Sure, sure, sure. And the 20 years. Uh, the, why 20? Those who are eager, even if they can remember the mantra that will be given to him or are, uh, they are eligible, but you have to accept the ideology of Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna and that is purity. That is the uh, purity means the unselfishness and love. That is purity. So ultimate goal is to develop unselfishness and love. If you like that, then you can accept Sri Ramakrishna's mantra. Thank you friends. Let us say Shanti three times. And we conclude. You can also say Shanti and when you are saying the Shanti means peace, the you, first you remember, try to imagine that you are praying to the God in the nature that please have mercy and peace on me. And the second peace, all the neighbors and the beings around you let they be friendly with you. And the third piece from your own body and mind, it should be healthy and happy. Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Tat Sat